So this is the part that most people think about when they think about DevOps, CI and CD, and infrastructure as code. True, these are the heart of DevOps, but only with the correct application of all you've learned so far about becoming a learning organization and agile methodologies can you make this final part successful. I first got a taste of this in the early 2000s, working on an automated deployment and testing pipeline. This is the first time I've seen automated builds and automated testing come into play. A developer would submit a check-in and trigger a build. Each build would have unit tests and integration tests after the build was successful. Once it ran, it was given a release number or a hotfix number based on the branch of the code it was compiled for. It wasn't until some years later that I realized how big of an impact these practices would make on the industry as a whole. Today's CI and CD pipeline includes the following. Maintain a code repository. Get works great. Automate the build. Use an automation tool like Jenkins, BuildBot, or Bamboo to manage your build process. Make the build self-testing to compile and run smoke tests on check-in to know if it's broken before you go any further in the CI process. Everyone commits to a personal development branch. Make sure there's a code review before merging the changes into the development branch. The builds are done off the development branch. This is to find and fix the issues as soon as possible. Always be building. Bundle the commits up to 30 minutes between builds so that you have builds constantly going through the system. Keep the builds fast. Make sure you can complete a build in 15 minutes. Automated testing for unit and integration tests. You should always be testing some build. Automated deployment. Use Capistrano, M Collective, Yum, to deploy your builds to a staging or production environment. Unit testing. This is the core of CI and CD. This should be done on code commit. The unit test framework should be extensible and module to test the work you're working on. Test driven development. This is the cornerstone of automated testing. This practice is what enables a framework to build the CI and CD pipeline on. Test-driven development is a software development practice where you write the test to check the selection of code before you develop the code further. CI scope. Using CI, you should be able to do multiple deployments to production a day. However, it is important to figure out how to confine the scope of the CI to be able to achieve that. So TDD is an absolute must. But unit tests on commit is the next step, followed by integration tests on a promoted build that has passed the smoking unit test. This requires you to come up with a promotion process for builds. The promoted builds should go through a full integration test twice a day. Late night runs allow your test builds to be ready the next morning, and you will have the ability to address any issues overnight. Do another run in the late morning and see the results by the end of the day. Integration testing. Integration testing is a lot more robust than unit tests. These tests should test as much as possible. The API, end-to-end, -end, and resiliency and latency testing. Now let's talk about the build tools pipeline. Building your CI CI pipeline with the right tools. These are the tools I recommend. Git as a source code repository. Jenkins is the industry standard for build automation. Docker is great for both building quick and clean build environments. Build tools like Maven, Gradle, and CMake are essential. Then you will need a build or artifact management tool to help you with your build promotion and deployment repositories. CI frameworks. These are the testing frameworks that you have to use to actually do the integration testing. A few of them are noteworthy, JUnit, Testing NG, Cucumber, Spinach, Google Tests, and Selenium. These are all great test frameworks. Now let's talk about automated provisioning. Things have gotten a lot easier since the days of the API-based AWS and using Zenlib to create and launch file-based VMs. Tools like OpenStack and AWS Dashboard and Amazon's APIs have made it simple to build complex environments rapidly. In a lot of senses, replacing the bare metal deployment tools like Kickstart and Jumpstart Along with it came tools like auto-scaling and microservice architectures that replaced the monolithic three-tier architectures that when a server went offline, so did your service or your site.
Let's talk about resource provisioning. Bare metal. This is being slowly replaced, but still makes sense for some middleware and backend components like DBs and data stores, or where there's a lot of CPU overhead. OpenStack has come light years when it comes to bare metal deployments, but with proper automation of kickstart and jumpstart in combination with configuration management tools like Puppet and Chef, it is still a very valid way to run things. Docker is quickly replacing a lot of other solutions out there and a lot of bare metal architectures because of its light resource overhead because it's not a hypervisor. The packaging and application are combined into a single object, giving you the ability to roll forward and roll back of a whole environment is incredibly useful. VMs is a good solution for QA and development and production environments. The only issue with VMs is they can take up to 20% overhead of a system depending on the hypervisor and hardware. Now let's move on to another topic, configuration management. This is critical that you build configuration management into your application deployment and provisioning deployment pipelines. This gives you the ability to actually do CI CD. Now let's talk about best practices for CI and CD. Enforce infrastructure as code to create immutable infrastructure. Create an extensible framework that works on new projects Reject as much hard coding of infrastructure as possible. Make it manageable with better tools. So this brings this section to an end and for the most part, the course to an end. Thank you for listening and I hope you got a lot of value from this course.